Are you a nursing parent who is wondering how you can help your baby to have more sleep? Perhaps you listened to the episode last week about how human milk actually contributes to baby sleep and about how infant sleep patterns actually vary from the advice we're given from many health professionals when we look at anthropological and biological studies of infant sleep. However, you are still a parent living in this day and age with a busy schedule to keep, other children to watch, very few supporters that can hold your baby while you take a little nap, and you have perhaps a soft mattress or lots of blankets and a pillow, and you need to be able to get some sleep alongside your baby, and you're wondering if there are ways that you can gently nudge your nursing baby into more sleep. I've got you. This week, we're talking all about how to help the nursing baby sleep just a little bit more. So let's get into it. When I began breastfeeding, I was blindsided by how difficult it was. I may have thought I was prepared, but having known only a handful of people who had ever breastfed and only seeing it up close from a couple of them, I had a huge learning curve. Since then, I've become a doula, a lactation consultant, and a childbirth educator. I'm your host, Lo Nigrosh, and I welcome you to the Milk Making Minutes, where we explore breastfeeding experiences through the lens of systemic barriers so that you know your breastfeeding struggles are not your fault and your triumphs really are the miracles you feel they are. Now, as always, I'm just going to give a little preface by saying... I am by no means a sleep expert, and I will link some of my favorite sleep experts in the show notes because those are amazing people. If you're really struggling with this topic, they are great people to reach out to, but sleep and baby feeding are very intertwined. So many of us who are lactation consultants have had to learn a lot about baby sleep along the way because we field so many questions about it. As someone who has two children who are nine and five... I worried so much about my baby sleep, especially for my oldest, who, as it turns out, has a lot of sensory needs and still struggles with sleep to this day. And as I cited in last week's episode about how human milk can help with sleep, I was nursing that baby all through the night and he was just a baby who needed a lot of close contact who had a lot of night wakings and still to this day needs a lot of comfort, a lot of reassurance. And I have learned that is just part of what I am providing him as his parent. And I'm trusting that as he gets older and feels more sure of himself, that sleep will get better. And it has over the years. And we've learned ways for both of us to meet our needs. And so if I were able to talk to myself from nine years ago, I would say, this feels really hard. You are working a more than full-time job and you are feeling really tired. And it's not fair that our culture doesn't allow for you to take off a year of paid leave so that you can care for your baby right now while your baby has lots of night wakings and needs lots of feedings and you're in a bubble with not a lot of support so that you can get more rest and this time will pass. And I recognize that I was able to handle those night wakings and I had a partner around who took over when I really needed it. I was mostly doing the night times, but if I was desperate, he would. And I also recognize that other people are not in that situation. And sometimes mental health dictates that we make different decisions, given that we do get so little support. So when humans grew up in large family structures, when we slept on harder mats on the floor, when we had large family groups who could care for the baby during the day and at night, we could meet our sleep needs more easily. And 
but that is just not the case. So if you are needing to meet your sleep needs by nudging your child towards modern sleep practices, even though that's not really evolutionarily or biologically what your child would do naturally on their own, I understand. This is a safe, non-judgmental space. And what might be ideal for your infant might not be what is ideal for you as a modern parent. Hi, I'm Kanika, and you're listening to That's Total Mom Sense, the podcast, where I interview public figures on their life lessons in parenting, legacy, and built-in sixth sense. Hey, what's up? I'm Kelly Rowland, and you're checking out That's Total Mom Sense. Hi, this is Chelsea Clinton, and my experience on That's Total Mom Sense was fantastic. It's me, Bobby Brown. Can't wait to share my story. Thank you to my guests, brand partners, community, and you for making this show possible. Episodes release every Thursday, wherever you listen to podcasts. You can join my tribe by logging on to thatstotalmomsense.com and by following me on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram at Kanika Chadda Gupta. Now let's dive in to today's episode. That being said, how can you gently provide your child a bit more sleep so that you can sleep a little bit more. The next thing I want to say is often when we become parents, we feel like we still need to do all the things for our household and for our social lives that we used to do before. And that causes us to get less sleep. Like, We want to have the same laundry schedule. We want all the dishes to be clean before we go to bed. We want the floors to be swept and mopped as they were before. We want the bathroom to be cleaned as consistently as it was. But we have way fewer hours in the day. I want to give you the permission to give yourself the permission to say, screw the dishes. I'm going to go to bed at 8 o'clock when my baby goes down for a good long stretch of two hours, if that's as long as your baby will sleep, because I had one of those, so I can get a little bit of extra sleep. If you need to move to paper plates for a while because the dishes bother you, do that. There are always ways to make life more manageable if the baby is not making life more manageable. And if you need help strategizing these things, if you have tried everything and the baby is just not getting the memo of what you would like the baby to do, and you just need somebody who's a little bit more removed from the situation, who's not as emotionally attached to the situation, who will listen to what your goals are and not impose their own goals onto the situation, but who understands fully the hormones of human milk production, who understands baby sleep cycles, who can help guide you on milk storage capacity, on baby hunger signals, on baby development. I would love to be that person who helps you strategize this. So if you've tried a lot of things and it's not really working and you're feeling discombobulated still, all of my information is in the show notes. We can meet virtually or in person if you aren't nearby. So www.quabinbirthservices.com. So you can look for ways to change your own life. Secondly, you can start thinking about how you change the environment to make it more likely that the baby will sleep. Some of the things you can do to help with the circadian rhythm of your baby is lowering the lights at night. This is something I've been trying to do with my nine and five-year-old more regularly. Once we hit that after dinner time, I go ahead and turn off the kitchen lights. I turn off the living room lights. I turn off the hall light and I turn on just one low lamp so that we can see We can read books, but I try to indicate to our brains that it is now dark by turning off all the lights in the house. This will help your baby as well. 
Um, it'll also help your own brain to turn off. Then the other thing is spending lots of skin to skin time leading up to that time when you would like your baby to start getting sleepy. So whether you work out of the house or whether you're staying at home caring for your baby, if towards the evening you can abandon some of the chores and the busy work, I know that is hard, but if you can do some frozen dinners or do some easy dinners, some smoothies or some soups. I love boxed soup or canned soups during this postpartum time so that they're easy, they're relatively nutritious, they're cheap, (laughs) yet you're not having to spend a lot of time at the stove and you can sit on the couch relaxed and calm. And if your baby is nursing, great, because we know that human milk has the amino acids and the hormones needed to induce sleep, but also just the calm skin to skin time in and of itself for 30 minutes to an hour to two hours for that baby can help signal to the baby that it's rest time. It can also help you for that as well. Going outside before bedtime can really be helpful. First thing in the morning, if you take a walk in a carrier or in a stroller and baby gets that morning sunlight, can be helpful to signal, okay, now it's morning time. Having morning sunlight to the eyeballs is great for giving the signals for the circadian rhythm. There's a lot of new research coming out about this. It's good for all ages, including babies. And then the same thing for nighttime. So at night, if you can Just even get out for a minute, Um, even in the cold. Wrap yourself up, put your baby in a carrier. Babies are very resilient in those carriers next to your body heat. And look at the stars for a minute. Look at the sky. Walk around the block. Just walk up and down your street for a second. If you can take a longer walk, great. This will signal to your baby that it's nighttime. It'll help their circadian rhythm and it will help begin to signal that it is sleepy time when they are out under that nighttime sky. We are exposed to so much artificial light. We are not surrounded by the elements and it becomes harder for our babies to recognize the difference between day and night and the exposure to the fresh air we are seeing is now good for babies. Then once you nurse that baby to sleep, You can, if you're trying to move away from nursing to sleep, you can do a couple of things. You can nurse until they're looking really tired, slip the nipple out of their mouth and replace it with either a pacifier or your finger. I don't really recommend this if your baby is younger than 12 weeks or if you're worried about your milk supply. But if your baby is older than 12 weeks or your milk supply is well established and baby is just about to drift off into sleep and they will tolerate you slipping the nipple out of their mouth. You can slip it out of their mouth. You can put a finger in their mouth to suck on until they fall asleep or a pacifier and see if they will tolerate that instead. Some babies will not. They will not be tricked, but others will. So you can play around with that. Some babies hate the crib or a bassinet, anything that has walls around it, but they will tolerate a mat on the floor. This is a Montessori style sleeping surface. So if you are not comfortable with bed sharing, you can place a mat on the floor and that allows you to lay the baby down, spoon them for a second while they're not nursing. They'll feel you next to them and then you can roll away. It's much harder to climb into a crib and get up and walk away. So that gives you an extra option. I can tell you a quick little anecdote from my own child's life. For my first son, we had a crib that was my husband's crib when he was a baby. And then we set it up in the room and he rarely used it. I can probably count on one hand the number of times he actually slept in it. We tried quite a few times and it just never really panned out. Like I said, he was a sensitive sleeper. And we had a variety of childcare situations when I was working about 60 hours a week. And the childcare situation that we ended up in full time for a couple of years 
was a Montessori school that started in infancy. At his previous daycare, he had not taken naps. And they had said, we don't have time to rock babies to sleep. And I was very appalled by this. I cried every day on my way to work. I just knew he was not very well taken care of. But we had had a neighbor taking care of him who was lovely. And then she ended up getting a job and we needed to find other child care. So we had this quick turnover. And so now here we are at the Montessori school. And I said to them, he won't sleep in a crib and he really prefers to be rocked to sleep. And they said, do you care if we rock him to sleep? And I said, absolutely not. That's fantastic. I would love that. And then the second thing they said is, do you mind if we lay him down on a mat? That's a Montessori style. And I said, and he was young. He was just a few months, maybe four or five months. I said, oh, yeah, I would love that. I said, he normally co-sleeps, so maybe the mat will work. And that very first day he slept, he took a nap for three hours. Mm -hmm. He didn't even nap for three hours at home unless he was in a carrier. And that's when I knew he was going to be well taken care of there. So sometimes having a different sleeping surface that is not a crib or a bassinet can really help them to feel safe and secure. And then if they wake, they might be more easily settled if you can just go lay down next to them, even if it's not in your own sleeping surface. And then if you're trying to lay your baby down, hold your baby for about 20 minutes or so after the eyes close, there's a much better chance that they won't fly open again. As soon as you're you lay your baby down, that's when they get into that deeper sleep. And and then as your baby gets a little older, you can start a predictable bedtime routine. So this is six months and older. You can start to brush their gums or teeth with a wet washcloth. You can start reading together, singing favorite songs, all quietly in the same order. You can start nudging them towards shorter nursing sessions by slipping your finger into the corner of their nearly asleep mouth. You can spoon them on that mat or in your sleeping surface if they're sleeping there. So these are all ways that you can try to get a little more sleep. I want to hear from you. I would love to know the ways that you got more sleep as you were nursing your baby. So please join my Milk Making Minutes community group on Facebook. This is a place where both perinatal health professionals and parents come together and talk about the challenges to feeding babies human milk, what makes it difficult. We have discussions, we answer polls, and the idea is to grow and then together create social change so that feeding babies human milk becomes that much easier for people moving forward. If you think this episode could be helpful to somebody you know, share it with them. If you are enjoying episodes in general, please rate and review it on your favorite podcasting app. Thanks. Bye.